hello everyone how are you going welcome back to another video today in this tutorial we are gonna talk about what is kernel in operating system let's get started kernel is a computer program that is the heart and core of an operating system since the operating system has control over the system so the kernel also has control over everything in the system it is the most important part of an operating system we can say it's the central component of an operating system Whenever a system starts up, computer's BIOS completes a hardware bootstrap or initialization. It then runs a bootloader which loads the kernel from a storage device into a protected memory space. Once the kernel is loaded into the computer memory, BIOS transfers control to the kernel. It then loads other operating system components to complete the system startup and make control available to users through a desktop or other user interface. Now here is a critical point to remember, kernel remains in the memory until operating system is shut down. It is also important to note that if kernel is damaged or cannot load successfully, computer will be unable to start. This will require service to correct hardware damage or restore operating system kernel to a working position. Alright, now let's go a little more deeper into it. Basically kernel is responsible for low level tasks such as disk management, memory management, task management, and so on. It provides an interface between application and hardware components of a system. We can say kernel acts as a middleman who manages communication between software and hardware. So for example, when a program wants to access hardware resources such as RAM, it sends a request to the kernel. This request is called a system call. After receiving a system call, Kernel accesses the requested hardware and responds back to the program. Kernel also maintains a process table that keeps track of all active processes. It decides which process should be allocated to processors to execute and which process should be kept in the main memory to execute. Ok now let me get your head around something really significant. Kernel is kept and usually loaded into a separate memory space known as kernel space which is dedicated to the behind the scenes work needed to run a system like memory allocation and process management. This space is protected from being accessed by other applications and the code of kernel is loaded into this area. Other programs such as browser, world processor, audio and video player use separate memory space known as user space. This is the place where users have given some memory to do their own activities in simple terms, this is the place where application software is executed. Due to these two separate spaces, user data and kernel data do not interfere with each other and do not cause any instability and slowness. Now let's talk about the functions of a kernel. Access computer resources. Kernel can access various computer resources such as CPU, input output devices, memory and so on. Resource management. It is the duty of a kernel to share the resources between various processes and make sure each process uniformly accesses the resource. Third function memory management. Every process needs some memory space, so memory must be allocated and deallocated for its execution. All this memory management is done by a kernel. Finally, device management. Peripheral devices connected to the system are managed and controlled by a kernel. Now let's talk about the types of kernel. Monolithic kernel. In this type of kernel, all the operating system services run in kernel space, which provides efficient communication between components. However, it also means that a failure in one component can crash the entire system. Examples of monolithic kernel. Linux, FreeBSD, OpenBSD, NetBSD and Solaris. Microkernel. It only includes essential services in kernel space. All other services run in user space. This approach reduces the kernel size and improves the system reliability. However, it also results in slower communication between components due to the need for inter-process communication. Examples are QNX, Minix, L4 and Hurled. Hybrid kernel. It's a combination of monolithic and microkernel architectures. It includes a small kernel in kernel space with other services running in user space. This approach provides both efficiency and reliability. Examples are Windows, NT, XP, Vista, 7, 8 and 10. 
Mac operating system versions before 11, iOS versions before 10, Android versions before 8. Nano kernel. This type of kernel is a minimalistic operating system architecture where the kernel provides only the most basic functions needed for an operating system to run. All other functions such as device drivers, file systems and network protocols are implemented as user level processes. Examples are QNX, Minix and L4. Last one Exokernel. It's an operating system architecture that exposes the hardware resources directly to user level applications while providing minimal services such as address space management and protection. It allows user level applications to directly control hardware resources such as CPU, memory and network interfaces. Examples are X operating system, Nemesis and Spin. Alright so with that this brings me to the end of my topic. Thanks for watching please subscribe and stay tuned for more videos.